this time of the year is tomato time and I thought we must do a beautiful upside down tomato tart with short crust pastry on top. Now let's start with the short crust pastry. Just sift the flour, a little bit of salt in the flour and once the flour is sifted then the butter is fridge temperature. You simply just cut the butter up so that it's sort of nice big chunks and I'm going to use this lovely pastry cutter now I know they're not easy to get anymore one can certainly use your fingers to rub the butter in or you can take two knives and cut the butter in with that now we need to glue that lot together and what we're using in this case is egg yolk only the yolk and then ice cold water. The best is to leave a couple of ice cubes in a cup and let them melt. So it's two tablespoons of ice water. Now one of the biggest challenges with pastry is that if you make the pastry too wet it's inclined to shrink in the oven and it's a problem that I've battled with for years. Then I remember that my mother used to always add brandy to the pastry. Now I couldn't figure why she did that and the reason is that the brandy is sort of alcohol when it goes into the oven the alcohol evaporates so you don't get the same horrible shrinking that you would otherwise normally get. Oh it smells good. <laughs> I feel like saying cheers. So we put the brandy. Obviously if you can't use alcohol you can leave the brandy out. Just cut this mixture in with a little knife until you get these coarse wet crumbs and now at this stage you start using your hand to and you look at the action you turn the bowl and you go like this. So this dough we can just put in a little plastic bag and don't be tempted to use the dough straight away it needs to stand to rest for a while. Now for this tomato tart we need lovely ripe, ripe is the operative word here. Tomatoes, the Roma tomatoes are nice and fleshy and they give you an excellent result. The tomatoes must just be cut into quarters and put into a bowl and then we're going to toss them with some dressing. Okay. Now that we've cut up the tomatoes we are going to add some of the balsamic vinaigrette. Now obviously that lovely sweet balsamic flavor goes exceptionally well with the tomatoes and it helps to roast the tomatoes nicely. So we just toss them and then we put the tomatoes skin side down on a non-stick baking sheet. Now while Janet is doing the tomatoes let's just prepare the bell peppers and now we're going to cut those peppers lengthwise each half into four in other words the whole pepper will be cut into eighths now likewise the peppers get to uh, tossed in the in the dressing we put them on the same baking sheet with the tomatoes so this now goes into the oven to roast about 45 minutes we've got one that has been roasted now we're ready to line the flan dish but the secret to this recipe is at the bottom of the flan we're going to put a proper sugar caramel and that caramel when the pie bakes coats this tomato tart with a beautiful glaze now let me show you the secrets of making a really good caramel the big secret when you're caramelizing sugar is never to stir it you actually just want to use a tilting movement of the pot dry pot dry sugar goes into the pot and all you do is shake the sugar. Now you can see our sugar has caramelized completely. Now you immediately take it off the heat and pour it into your porcelain dish and then straight away take the dish and tilt it away from you and just tilt it so that you try and coat the whole base of the dish 
with this lovely aromatic caramel. Now we're going to line the dish with the baked vegetables. Now the tomatoes have still got their lovely shiny skins. We simply just arrange the tomato on top of the caramel. Then we fill in the gaps with the peppers. Because you want to have, when the tart is turned upside down, it needs to have a beautiful red look. Now a natural partner with tomatoes is always onions. Now what we've done with the onions is we've used four onions which we first slice in half and then slice the halves into thin little rings. So these onions were put into a saucepan and they were smeared very very slowly. But there is another little trick or a technique that I really would love to teach you and that is to smear your onions under a paper collar then you never get the onions burning and the water as it evaporates drips back into the onions and you get this beautiful slow cooking and sweetening and flavor development of the onions now to make this paper collar you just take a piece of grease proof paper fold it in half half and then in half again and then you just keep folding it like this and then you cut the excess off and then you cut into the top so that when you open it up to go over the onions in a pot you've got this frilly bit which takes the shape of the pot and then you can simply just put your lid on there. This needs a little bit of garlic and herb seasoning on the tomatoes and the peppers. Now just spread this gently over there. Here you are sweetheart, you're looking good. I'm sure you know by now that I just love making pastry. I think it's the most therapeutic thing. Anyway, here's our pastry. It's been left out of the fridge now for a while so it can thaw out. Okay, sweetie, just got to roll you. And ew, this pastry feels good, eh? Um, sometimes pastry does tend to, well, short crust pastry does tend to break up. And if you find you have difficulty in rolling the pastry, then it is a good idea to just give it one little fold, fold it in thirds, it sort of firms up the pastry a little bit and then you can start rolling it and it will it will roll more easily. Now obviously what we're aiming for here is to roll the pastry to the size and the shape of that round dish. So that's what we're bearing in mind when we're rolling here. Now just put this little baby over the rolling pin Put your pie in position, re-roll it off, and now please do not stretch the pastry, I can't emphasize this enough. Okay, now this darling goes into the oven and it'll be baked and then we'll turn it upside down. Now we've got to turn the plate upside down on the tart and then we've got to turn the whole gedunte upside down so that the tomatoes are on top. Move the tart over the edge of the work surface so that it firmly rests on your one hand. You just turn it. Now don't think this is just for the vegetarians. Believe me, the meat eaters absolutely love this. And as we all know, basil is a natural accompaniment to tomato. So a couple of aromatic basil twigs on there can only make a good thing better. Enjoy.